a very warm welcome to the fourth film in our Design Details series. In it, we look at the characteristics of 1 to 20 scale staircase drawings. Stairs and staircases are complex elements with complex geometry. Designing stairs often involves a process of trial and error because it's very difficult to hold all the factors that will determine the design in your head at once. It's advisable to start by designing stairs in sketch form, making your design decisions one after another and amending the sketch as and when necessary if the combination of individual factors produces unsatisfactory results. You will need to determine the pitch of your stairs, the number of rises, whether they will have closed sides or be open with a well hole, the position of the top and bottom steps, the type of step design, the dimensions of stair flights and landings, the type of banister, the position of the nominal landing edge, the relationships between this edge and the well hole, and between the banister and the well hole, the banister start and end points on dummy stairs, how the steps are joined to the wall and the flight of stairs to the floor. You will not fully grasp the interrelationships between all these factors until you have drawn your stairs, so always work up a first version in sketch form before starting the drawing itself. You have already seen this staircase in the headquarters building of Stadtwerke Wolfsburg AG. It's what's known as a non-essential staircase. Let's take a look at a 1 to 20 scale longitudinal section through the stairs. Here we can see, for example, that the solid banister starts one going length before the first step. The main reason for doing this is to enable a person climbing the stairs to grasp the handrail before mounting the first step. It also shows the difference in height between the solid banister and the handrail at the top of the stairs. Once again, this makes it easier to grasp the handrail before stepping onto the last step. On the plan view of the stairs, you can see wide well holes on both the facade and first floor landing sides. The banisters are very wide for design reasons so that they match the width of the breastwork between the columns on the first floor. The top step of the staircase sits well in front of the ceiling edge so that the nominal landing edge is flush with the suspended ceiling. We designed this set of stairs for the laboratory building at the Karlsruhe University of Applied Sciences. The stringers and banisters form one single component. The one-piece diagonal integrated stringer and banister is designed to disguise the presence of an intermediate landing required because there are more than 18 stairs. The section drawing shows how the difference in pitch between the stairs themselves and the handrail is concealed in the profile of the stringer banisters. The dominant design feature in our vocational school in Munich is a spacious main staircase with single flight stairs and intermediate landings. Both the section and the photograph show how the underside of the staircase, the handrail and the banisters run parallel to one another in a neat line. Summary Stairs and staircases are complex elements with complex geometry and designing stairs often involves a process of trial and error. It is advisable to start by designing stairs in sketch form, making your design decisions one after another and amending the sketch as and when necessary. You will need to determine the pitch of your stairs, the number of rises, whether they will have closed sides or be open with a well hole, the position of the top and bottom steps, the type of step design, etc. Please take a look at the fifth film in our Design Details series. In it, we consider the various different types of facade representations used in 1 to 20 scale drawings.